Hello there, and welcome to All Painting My Way. My name's Rob. I hope you're having a great day. Right, in today's video, we're going to be looking at color mixing. We're going to be using just five different paints, five different oil paints. Now, with these five different oil paints, basically, I do go into this in the, the little clips, there's three separate clips. I do go into it explaining that you can actually mix with just using these five paints 90% of any color that's around you in everyday life. When you're out and about walking down the street, if you're out in the parks, in walking in the woods or anything, all of the colors that you're actually seeing around you, 90% of those colors you can mix with just these five colors. Now, obviously, we're not going to be talking about metallics, if you've got a metallic color or a luminous color or anything like that. Those you will need to buy specialist paints for. Yes, there is just five colors. I'm not saying that you have to just use those five colors. They do sell various colors in tubes. Now, obviously, that's a lot easier when you're doing oil painting because if you have a specific color that you need, normally you can just look it up and then go and buy it in the shop. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you that you can actually mix with a, a limited supply of paints, just five colors that are going to be on the palette, and you can mix um, various various different shades. Now, those five colors that we're going to be using is going to be a blue, a brown, a red, a yellow, and a white. Now, for the purpose of the video that I'm actually doing, there's going to be a phthalo blue, a Van Dyke brown, a bright red, cadmium yellow, and titanium white. Now, I'm not saying that if you try this, you have to use those exact colors that I've just explained, like the phthalo blue. You can use any blue, basically, uh, any, any dark brown, any red, really, because basically all you'll be doing is, is altering the value slightly. As long as you've got those five colors, then basically if, if your red is slightly darker than my red and my red's, uh, my yellow is slightly brighter than your yellow, it will still work because basically you'll just need to add a little bit more paint than maybe I would if I was using a slightly different yellow, etc., etc. You'll just need to change the values. Now, when we actually do this these videos, you'll see the most important thing that you need to do is create the value first if you're trying to match a color don't straight away go and try and mix some paint to try and get to that color you need to mix the value first so if you've got an orange which is sort of 50 percent value then basically when you put your paints together and you come up with um a similar color orange because you've just mixed maybe a, a red and a yellow together to make an orange what you need to do first, when you put them side by side, get the value right. The color will be different. We're not matching the color straight away. You need to get the value. Once you've got the, the balance, the value about right, then you can start going into the color. It will all become a bit more self-explanatory as, as you look into the videos and see the clips. But what we're gonna be using when we, when we use these five colors is a color wheel. Now, I've got a color wheel here. You're going to have to excuse this because it's on a reflected piece of plastic. So I've got to hold it so it doesn't reflect properly. So Sorry, so it doesn't reflect back at the camera. Now, as you can see, this is going to be a bit awkward because it's upside down and back to front and my fingers are going to be pointing in the wrong directions. But when you actually darken a color, the only colors that you're going to use to darken a color will be a blue or the brown they're the only two colors that you actually use and again if you're going to lighten a color the only two colors that you're going to use to lighten the color will be the white or the yellow okay now on the normal color wheel here as we can see we have the blue then we go down to the purple then we go down to the red then we go down to the orange, then we've got a yellow, 
then we've got a green. Now also on this color wheel, what I've also added is a white and a brown. Now, as you can see, you've got the two dark colors. They are on opposing sides of the color wheel, as you can see, opposing sides. And the same with the white and the yellow. They're on opposing sides. That is there for a reason. Now, primarily, it's there because of the blue and the green and the yellow side of the color wheel for the simple reason if you were mixing a green, for instance, and you got the value right, but you wanted to darken the color slightly, if you start adding a blue to that green color that you've got, you're gonna completely change the value and push the color towards the blue side, which you don't want to do. You just want to darken the color to basically just change the value. So what you do, you'd mix the secondary darkening color which would be the brown so you've got a choice of the two that you can use again the same as if you were using the light if again if you had the green and the value was was just right but you wanted to just lighten the color without changing the value you just wanted to lighten that color if you start adding yellow to it then basically you're going to completely change that value again it's going to go like a light pale green instead of the green that you actually want so to darken the green but keep in the value you'd need to add at the um at the white sorry because obviously that you'd use that color to lighten it rather than the actual yellow which would change the value but basically it's because of this side of the wheel because it's the it's the yellow the green and the blue side so basically what you've got again two dark colors, two light colors. And again, as you can see on here, as I've pointed out, they're on opposing sides of the wheel. Now, when you actually see the demonstration, you'll see how this actually works. So what I suggest we do is we go straight into those slides um, and you'll see with the five colors and this color wheel, hopefully um, you'll be able to see this color wheel. It is a smaller color wheel that I've, I've basically just holding up. Sometimes you can't actually see it on the camera because the light where I actually am, the light shines right through the window and does put a little bit of sheen sometimes on it. But if you just bear that in mind from this actual color wheel, and we'll just go into three, demonst three demonstrations, sorry, three demonstrations now, just showing you how to basically mix a color. We've basically mixed the color, first of all, drawn a line of that color on the palette, and then we're just gonna show you basically how to mix the value and then create the color. So hopefully this all makes sense to you. Hopefully it helps and uh, hopefully you can get something from it. So I'll speak to you after these clips. Right, here we are at a palette. We've got five basic colors. Now with these five basic colors, you should be able to mix basically any color that you actually see out and about when you're walking around in the street or, or anywhere in general, you should be able to mix any color that you see with these five colors. Obviously, I'm not talking about metallics or luminous colors or things like that, but everyday general colors that you see in your everyday life, you can mix using these five colors. Now, as long as you use a color wheel now I've got a basic color wheel here that we can see you've got basic colors around here you have a blue a purple a red an orange a yellow and a green now I've also put two additional colors on here we have a brown and we have a white now when you're mixing any color if you're trying to darken a color there's only the two colors that you'll actually use. One is the blue, one is the brown. If you're going to lighten a color, the two colors that you'll use will be the white and the yellow. Now, obviously, if you look at the color wheel, you can actually see the two to lighten are on opposite sides of the color wheel. The same with the blue to darken, they're on opposite sides of the color wheel. Now, this is obviously for a reason. As an example, 
if you were mixing a a green of some sort so we had a green which was in the middle of the blue and the green here you had a green there and you decided it was a little bit too dark and you needed to lighten it if you start using a yellow to lighten the green it's still going to be green because obviously blue and and yellow make the green it's on the blue side the green that you're looking at has got blue in it so the more yellow you add to it the greener it's going to go so basically it's going to go a nice light green now obviously if you're just trying to lighten that color you wouldn't use the yellow you'd use the opposing lightening color which would be the white the same with the dark if you had um, a green like this and you wanted to darken it slightly if you start putting the blue in yes you're going to darken it but it's going to be a darker green raw and it's going to go to the blue side so rather than actually just darkening the actual value that you've got you're going to be making it go more blue because you're using the blue as the dark color you want to keep the value of the color but just darken it along those lines so you use the opposing darkening color which would be the brown it'll all come to self-explanatory as we go along and using the demonstration but for this as i say these are just the primary colors you'll have in your wheel you'll you'll, you'll see these six colors blue purple red orange yellow and green and as we know if, if you're a beginner the blue and the red makes the purple the um the blue and the yellow make the green and the yellow and the red make the orange now obviously the brown here is a sort of is a dirty orange that's why we put it on this side of the of the uh, of the wheel it's a, as i say it's it's just a dirtier sort of orange so if you go along those lines you should be okay now what we've done here we've just mixed up an orangey creamy sort of color here now hopefully this is showing up well on the camera now what i'm going to do is try and duplicate this color using just these colors now what you'd need to do first of all is you'll have a rough idea of what's gone in there you obviously know that red's gone in there you obviously know that white's gone in there so basically what i'm saying you can do out of any of these colors you can duplicate any color so as an example if we just choose a little bit of red and a little bit of white let's just mix that up as an example to see where we go this is going to be nowhere near but this is the demonstration and this is what we show you so we just mix those to start with now what you need to do first don't try and match the color first you need to match the value the value is the density of the color you need to make sure that you've got the right value the right contrast once the contrast and the value of the color is balanced roughly then you'll go for the color but for now we're not trying to match the color we're just trying to match the value so if we put this color down here i mean just happens to be roughly about the same value but let me just as an example if i just darken that up a little bit let me maybe even add a speck of blue make this complete opposite of what we want to do okay right you can see there the value is pretty much the same there here the value is not right so what you need to do is get the value right so basically what we're looking at is you need to lighten that up a little bit so let's just add a tiny little bit of white in there maybe a little bit more remember we're not trying to match the color yet we're just trying to match the value the color comes afterwards See, we've gone a little bit lighter there. Again, we're looking at the value between the two. Maybe just a little bit lighter. And then hopefully, once we've got the value, 
we can concentrate on changing the color. For now, literally all we're doing. That's not far out actually, even though that was pretty close. Again, the value is a slightly different color, but the value is, is near enough the same. Yeah, compared to that, you can see the value is different because this is a lot darker. You need the sort of the same light consistency, the same value, same contrast between them. So now we've got that, what we need to do is now try and match the color. Now we can see that this color here is more bluey color than this. If we go back to our color wheel here, it's more of a blue color, which we've got here. So we need to go to the opposing side of the color wheel and we need to add like an orangey color, opposing side. So we need to add a little bit of orange to that. So what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of red, and a bit of yellow. Mix this round. Always make sure if you're actually doing an actual painting that you do mix enough color because you wouldn't want to end up only having half the amount and then go back. Not that it'd be a problem because if you use this, this method, you'll be able to match the color again anyway. But obviously for the sake of doing that, just make sure you've got enough the project that you're actually doing. We come back here. It's a little bit darker. I'd still say there's a little bit more blue in there. And again, looking back at the color wheel on the blue we've got here, we're coming back we need to go the opposite which is the orange so again just a touch of red a bit more yellow this does take time it does take practice as well the more you do this sometimes you can look at a color and it'll work straight away you can do it in a couple of just a couple of little sessions like this other times a little bit more complicated basically if you've got a if you've got a really dark color down here you could turn that dark color back to this believe it or not you need to add a lot of a lot of other paint to do that but you can turn any color to any other color again not including metallics or luminescent or anything like that so there Hopefully that's showing up okay. Still needs to be a bit lighter. But what this is where we got on the opposite side of the color wheel. Remember we've got to lighten it. We've got the white and the yellow. Now, because this is a more bluey color, if we keep adding the yellow, it's gonna push it towards the green side because of the blue consistency that you've got in here. So maybe what you want to do rather than adding the yellow is add a little bit of white, which is the opposing lightning color, which will be the white. So we'll add a little bit of white, just add a touch of red again. And rather than use the yellow, we'll use the white this time, just to lighten it. And again, just keep practicing this. It's an idea if you've got some spare time, just to make up a color, a random color, and then try and match it. Okay, so we go from there, let's see what we've got here. Okay, we're getting closer. Still needs to be a little bit lighter, I think. Tiny, tiny speck of red. A little bit more white. Do this in small increments, don't go too mad. Because you can overshoot the color. But even if you do, you can bring it back again, but it's, it's best to just do it gradually. Save going round and round in circles. Hopefully, yeah. 
almost there, I would say. So, a touch more red, a touch more white. Just keep on going. Make sure you mix it thoroughly. Bring it in from the edge. Don't leave any unmixed colours there. You want it to be as accurate as you can. Okay, let's go in here. And look at that. I'd still say that that's a little bit, a little bit more on the blue side. So. This is probably going to go all of a sudden, it will just go and hopefully we won't be fighting trying to get it back. Hopefully it doesn't go in the opposite direction, but if it does, we can still bring it back, don't worry. See where we got to now. It's still a little bit along the blue side, I would say. Bearing in mind, I don't know what this is going to be showing up like on the camera, but this drawer of paint that I've got down the centre has probably dried off a little bit. But don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll get there as near as we can. Let's just add a little bit of red. Let's go back to a touch of yellow. Just remember, just make sure you mix it thoroughly. As I say, sometimes some colours are more difficult than others. Sometimes you can do it straight away, but that all comes with practice. Now that, I would say, is not far out. very tiny tiny again hopefully this is showing up on the camera it's a tiny bit bluer I would say let's put a little bit off If you start doing this and you end up getting too much paint in here, just scoop some up and move it to one side. Don't waste it, always keep it because it can be used. If you get a load of spare paint and you just mix it together, like if we was to mix a bit of all of this together in a big blob, we'd end up with a, a neutral colour. It's normally an earthy sort of greeny brown colour if you mix stuff together. And we can always use paint like that because we can use it as a as a backdrop or we can use it as a as a part mix. So don't waste your paint, try and keep it in a little pot or something. All right, see where we go here. Now I would say that that's probably is just a touch more yellow. And then we should be there, I think. We will be doing other colours just so you can see. Let's have a look. I'd say that's pretty much pretty much bang on there, I would say. Let me just a little bit of 
that looks fine as I say it's difficult to tell because of the just come across looks pretty much okay for what we're doing but hopefully you can see how that well this is what we started with and we basically just change and again just remember using the colored wheel that we've got here two colors to darken only them two if you're darkening a color and those two for lightning and then just go for your opposing colors whatever it looks like if it's too blue then obviously look at the opposite side and okay we need to add that if it's too green obviously the red etc but what we'll do now is we'll, we'll clean up the board and we'll go on to another color okay here we are back again we've got a another color here which we're gonna try and match using these five colors as i said before obviously using the the color wheel two colors to darken which are the blue and the brown and the two colors to lighten which will be the white and the yellow so using this color wheel in these colors we can match any color again as long as they're not metallic or luminescent or anything like that um, in case I previously didn't mention, the colours that we've actually got here is a phthalo blue, that's a Van Dyke brown, that's just a bright red, that's a cadmium yellow, and that's a titanium white. So using these five colours, this colour wheel will be able to match that. So what you want to do first, as I said previously, is you want to match the value, not the colour. So once you've got the value, then you can go on to the color. So this is a bluey green color. So what I would suggest, we just get a little bit of blue and yellow. See where we end up. Just mix that together. If we come along there. We can see that's much darker. So we need to lighten that so we've got the value the same because this value is clearly that's a lot stronger than that. So we need to bring the value back from this down to that. So obviously what we would need to do, remember to lighten it, we've got two colors. This is where you need to be careful. Remembering this is a greeny color. It has blue in it. If you start trying to lighten it, with the yellow you're going to alter the green so this is why we have the secondary color to lighten it so obviously we need to lighten this to bring the value back so what i would just do is just add some white to that and again just remember value first color second that's really important Once we've got the value, we can then concentrate on the color itself. And that's a little bit lighter, I would say. Tiny little bit lighter. Again, I'd need to basically darken it up again. So we've come from really dark to really light. We need the, the, the value needs to be sort of in the middle of those two to get similar to this. Now, again, this has gone complete opposite of what I said earlier. We wouldn't use the, the yellow to lighten that because it's got blue in and that will change the green tone. We've gone too light this time. So to darken it again, because it's the green, we wouldn't put the blue in because that will change the green. This is why we have the secondary dark color, the same as we have secondary light and color. So to dark on that, I'd put a little bit of brown in. Just a touch, not a lot. Again, remember it's the value first, and I'll keep saying it, but it's really important. Now that's much better as you can see we've gone from dark to dark to light the value is around about the same 
So basically we need to, now we've got the value there, is concentrate on how to get the color back. So what we need to do is go, this is, is lighter than this. The color I've got here is more of a, a sort of a, I don't know, I would say it's more of a brownie, a dirty sort of brownie color. If we look at the color wheel here, this color is a more of a brown, which we've got down here compared to this. So we go to the over, opposite side, it's in between the green and the, and the blue. So basically we need to add more green, more blue. So basically what you need to darken this up slightly. So add a little bit more blue into that, I would say, and a little bit more green. So obviously we put the blue in and we'll put a touch of yellow in. to make the green and again this will probably change because remember what i said about the blue when you're lighting it if you put the yellow in you can see what's going to happen it alters the tone okay and that's gone a little bit too bluey color so what I should have done is actually put a little bit of white in. So what we'll actually do now is we'll just put a touch of white in there to compensate for the fact we've put the yellow in. Make sure you mix it thoroughly to come back around here. Okay, now that is not too far out. It's a little bit more bluey color, I would say, than this, which again, if we go up to the color wheel, it's more it's more blue. So we need to come to opposing side. It's a sort of bluey green somewhere across here. So we need to basically go an orange, orangey sort of red, a touch of brown maybe, because it's on the opposing side. So let me just put a touch of brown in there. And as I just keep saying in, in, the, in the previous clip, it's, you need to practice with this. Some colors are a lot easier to match than others. But if you use this technique, you'll find that you can match any, any color. Again, not including metallics or luminescence. So that's not far out already. I would say probably a little bit more brown. Maybe a touch of yellow. Just be very careful if you're using anything that's got blue in it because it will change so quickly with the yellows. One minute you'll be close and then all of a sudden the value will completely change. So again, this is why we have two light colors. These two for lightning, these two for darkening. Just remember that. Okay, that's still a little bit blue, I would say. I still need to go a bit to the brown side. So maybe we'll add a little bit of brown again, just a touch. And we'll lighten it a little bit with a little bit of white. We won't put the yellow in, remember. I don't want that yellow to change to the blueness again. Just practice, practice, practice. It's a good little exercise, this. Just helps you get your eye in and understanding the tones and the values.
that's not far out. I would probably say this is still a little bit more blue than this. So again, going back to the color wheel, it's a little bit more blue. We need to come this side. Again, I'm gonna go for the brown. Just to knock that back a bit. Touch of white and a touch of little tiny little bit of yellow in there. A bit of white. Make sure you mix it thoroughly. Come across, see what we got. Doesn't look far out to me. I don't think, I'm not sure what that looks like on the camera. Just hand over to cover that up. Hopefully you can see it. it's not far out at all. <clears throat> I would say a tiny, tiny little bit of brown just to darken that a touch. Mix it thoroughly. I would say that's pretty much pretty much bang on. Again, just bear in mind, if, if you can see slightly a bit of difference, this was painted over an hour ago, this line, for the purpose of the video. So it would have dried slightly, but I'd be happy with that if I was actually mixing some paint up for a palette and I was a little bit short and I needed to, to match the colour. I'd be happy with that. So hopefully you can see that's our second colour that we've mixed and we've actually matched it. We've gone from darks through lights until eventually we've we've got the color we, we needed. Again, it's just using these five colors and the color wheel. So what we'll do is we'll clean the palette and we'll go on to a third color. Okay, welcome back. Here we can see on our third color, we've got a beigey sort of brown color now this is actually darker on the palette than it probably actually looks because it's got reflected light coming off of the brush marks we'll do what we can with these five colors to try and match this so basically we've got to get our value first so this is a beigey color so we'll just take a little bit of brown and we'll just put some white in it see what we get Let's have a touch of red maybe a touch of blue now this is very strong blue as you can see knock that back with a little bit of the brown but again remember we're just getting the value first if you can help by getting the near to the color that will obviously help but don't worry too much for the moment we're just trying to get the value and that's not far out for value maybe a little bit lighter but as a first mix I would say that's not bad for the value in fact i will actually just leave that as it is i won't attempt to change the value of that so what we'll do is we'll now try and add to the actual color of this so if we go back to the the color wheel that we've got here this color we've got is obviously too too bluey green i would say which is down here the bluey green so opposite of bluey green we've got the ready orange 
So that's what we need to add into here, the ready orange color. So we'll basically add a little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow, make our orange. bit more as we can see this is way off needs a little bit of bread So, okay. Let's see what we got. Okay, now that obviously, if we look at the color wheel here, that looks more of a sort of a bluey sort of purple color, which we've got up here, bluey purple. So, we need to come opposite that, which is an orangey yellow. So we need to add a bit of an orangey yellow into that. Again, make sure you mix it thoroughly. Across here, it's a little bit lighter. So as you can say, we've changed from the dark, it's gradually getting lighter there. Again, this looks a bit more sort of um, bluey color to this. So, again, we're going the opposite orange yellow. I'll also put a touch of white in. just to help with the lightning. As I keep saying, just practice this. If you've got spare time, just keep practicing because it does help when you're painting. Knowing that if you lose a color or you run out of a certain color, then you'll be able to get it back. Yes, a lot of these colours you can actually buy in tubes now already pre-mixed, which does help. But maybe that try try that, get the get three or four different tubes of pre-mixed paint and then just squirt a little bit of each colour out and mix that up and see what you end up with. And then use these five colours to try and match it. That'll be a great little exercise and you will be able to do it. Again, as long as you don't use metallics or luminescent. So we're coming back already again and this looks more more sort of a I don't know it's a more a sort of a, a yellowy color I would say so if we go up to our color wheel this looks a little bit more yellowy color than that so yellow here we've got a little bit of purple okay it's on the opposite side so just a touch Let's go for a touch of blue, just a touch because it's very strong. A bit more yellow, and we'll go back to white because remember, we've got the blue and the yellow, which is going to go a greeny color. I think there's too much blue gone in that. Again, looking at the blue, we go opposite, which is the orangey red. This is gone too much bluey green by putting that, it's very strong. So I need to go more red orange again. So we'll come back with a little 
little bit of red orange. Hopefully you can see over time, as with previous videos, we will get there in the end. As I've said before, some, some colours are easy to mix, some are a little bit more difficult. Again, it's basically changed from this and then lightening up as we come around to here. Now it looks a little bit more orangey again, so I'd, I'd want to be adding a little bit more red to this. As I say, just remember these five colours. They don't have to be exactly the same as, as these five colours. Let me just make that clear. Um, it doesn't have to be a cadmium yellow or titanium. As long as you've got these colours, a blue, a brown, a red, a yellow and a white. Because basically if the value of the red that you're using is slightly different, then you just change the value when you're actually mixing it. I'm not saying that you have to use these, which are phthalo blue, Van Dyke brown, bright red, cadmium yellow, titanium white. As long as you use, I wouldn't advise using a Prussian blue because that the pigment in that is really strong. But as long as you use five colours similar to this, they'll just be a different value. And you just need to adjust your values accordingly when you're mixing. But remember, as I said, we're going for the value first. So when you mix it, if you're using slightly different colors, you would maybe put a little bit more of one color in than I would if I was using a similar color. So that's not far out. Again, this looks more reddy colour than this, so I need to just put a touch more red in there. And hopefully in time we will realise the value of this and how useful it is. As I say, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. In fact, I would say that's not far. It's not far off. Maybe a little bit lighter big remember it's got blue in so rather than adding a yellow and changing it to a greeny color we'll just lighten it slightly with a little bit of white always remember that this is why we have two light colors and two darks it's basically because of the yellow and the blue they are the culprits They're not really culprits, so it's just a, it's just a term I'm using because it always seems to be those two colours that create a little bit of an issue. But that's all the fun of painting. Right, let's see what we got to with this. Again, hopefully there's not too many brush marks on here. I would say that that's pretty, pretty bang on. Maybe a touch more white. I would say hopefully after this, this should be fine. Let's have a look.
I would say that's pretty bang on. As I say, just remember this was painted about an hour ago. So it will have dry back slightly, but for what we're doing, it's maybe a little bit yellower, I would say. Maybe you need to darken that up a little bit. Again, if we're looking at yellow, we need to put a little bit of purple in. So maybe it's just a touch, and I mean a touch of blue, hardly any. And the red. Be very careful with the blue though, because it can kill a colour in an instant. But hopefully, I don't keep saying that, but we'll get there. There we go. We're going to see that. to tell hopefully not too many shadows showing up on the camera but that looks pretty bang on so again this is the third one we've seen we've basically come from the dark match your value so that you can you've you've got the tone the contrast just right and then gradually start changing the color accordingly as long as you go to the color wheel and use the opposing sides as I keep saying and again remember to darken you only use the two colors which are the blue and the brown to lighten the white and the yellow. So basically just remember that with the with about the blue and the yellow because they are the ones that create the issue on this side when you're adding if you're adding yellow to a sort of a bluey or greeny color it will keep the green but it will change change the values within it so which is why we have the secondary colors again with the brown for the darkening if you're darkening a green, say you've got the value just right, if you put a little bit more blue in to darken it, it's going to throw the green out. This is why we put the brown in. This is why we have the two dark colours on the opposing sides of the wheel and the two lights, because they compensate for one another. So as long as you remember those things, hopefully you shouldn't be too far out. If you do come across a, a grey, if you're using a grey of some sort, you basically need to think of a grey as a blue because it's got the same values in as a blue. So if you're looking at a grey, rather than thinking it looks too grey, if you just think to yourself that looks too blue because basically a, a grey is a similar value to a blue. Now, obviously, without doing a demonstration of that, it's difficult to explain hopefully we will do another video later on with that but if you if you just for the time being think of a gray as a blue then when you're doing this value sequence it'll all make sense but there we go that's the third the third color we've mixed hopefully you um you can appreciate that how that works now using just these five colors that's that's all you need to mix basically I would say 90% of everyday colors you see while you're out and about and walking around in, in nature and, and everyday, everyday use. So that's all you would need was these five colors. Use the color wheel again, as I described. When you're using that, pick the color you want. Get the value first. That's really important. Get the value first, then start changing the color because you'll save on ink. If you start trying to match the color first and then get the value back, you'll end up with so much more paint. Get the value first, then basically go for the color. Use the color wheel like this. And hopefully you'll find a little bit easier. Okay, so that's the third color. We'll call that one done. Hi there, and welcome back. Well, hopefully you appreciated those three little clips of, of mixing colors, and you can see how basically it makes more sense to mix the tone, the value first, before you start going into the color. 
Now, a lot of people actually try and mix the color straight away, which makes it really difficult because you end up adding and adding and adding and you end up with so much paint wasted. Whereas if you actually just create the value first, which can be done fairly easily, then just alter the color using the, uh, the color wheel, you'll, you'll basically get there a lot quicker and hopefully a lot easier. So hopefully those little clips um, made you appreciate that you, you can do it a lot easier. Hopefully if you can practice it and, and try it out yourself, I would suggest getting some random colors, just mixing them together and coming up with a color and then use your own five colors. As I said, a blue, a brown, a red, a yellow and a white. It doesn't have to be exactly as I've said, but as long as you've got those five colors. And then basically try and create a color that you've mixed just at random. If you just try that technique, you will find that eventually it will work. Now this does take practice like anything. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. In time, you should be able to just look at a color and then know roughly what's gone in it and almost be on it straight away. But make sure that you, you get the value first. And I'll keep on saying it, but that is super important. Get the value first, then go for the color. Now, I do apologize if, if it didn't quite look right on the screen. I do get a lot of reflected light coming in from where I am. And also, the for the eagle-eyed people who've watched one of my previous videos, you will notice in the previous video, I was actually holding a palette up. It was a clear Perspex palette. Now, the palette that these paints were on was that actual palette, but I had to basically put a grey background on. So I ended up using some grey gesso to basically put the background on that palette so those paints would actually show up and you couldn't see straight through and just see the easel straight through the palette because that would have made it a bit more difficult. So my, my clear Perspex palette is now grey and obviously because it's Perspex it does reflect light. Unfortunately my, my rear lights that I had for when I do videoing my um my my video in lights the daylight lights they actually got damaged in a recent um a recent upheaval and both the bulbs got broken so i'm actually waiting for a delivery at the at the time of making this video um so i couldn't get any backlight to help take away any any glare so also on the brush marks that you'll actually get in preparation for making this video the, the colour that's actually put on the palette was actually done about an hour before I actually started creating the video. So it would have slightly, I'm not saying completely dried, but the surface would have slightly dried and dulled down compared to what I'm actually mixing. So there might be a slight little variant. But obviously that and the reflected light, hopefully you can appreciate when you actually do mix the colour, you'll see that you can actually get those colours but obviously with the brush marks in there, sometimes it does show up and look a little bit different, although it's not. But I can assure you, they're pretty much 90, 95, 99% from the color that I was trying to get is the color I ended up with. So hopefully if you can give that a uh, a, a try with, with your own paints, and I'd love to know how you get on, please put in the comments below if you've actually tried it. And if you find it easy, if you find it more difficult even, just, just drop the comments below and let me know. I'd love to hear. But hopefully this makes it a lot more easier for you. Again, I'm not saying that you have to completely throw out all of your paints and only use the five paints I'm saying. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just for demonstration purposes saying that you can mix any color. Again, not including metallics and, and luminescent colors just using those five colors. Obviously for, for ease of painting, suppliers do manufacture various different colors, which is all good for us because we don't have to keep mixing loads of colors. But if you do come across colors that are a little bit more difficult to use, hopefully by using this technique, you can basically look at the color, maybe if it's in a magazine, cut it out, stick it down, and then using this color wheel and using the technique that I've shown, it will make it a little bit easier. So again, here's the color wheel. I'll try and hold it so it's non-reflecting. If you do want to make a copy of that, then feel free to do so. Um, obviously not my logo because that's copyright, but the rest of it, if you want to just make a note of, of, of that and maybe use it, 
try it out yourself. I'd love to hear how you get on. Hopefully it makes it easier for you. And uh, if you have any trouble, you might not be having trouble, in which case it's been a waste of time watching this video. But if it has helped, um, I would love to hear. Please give me a thumbs up. Really, really, really appreciate it because it does help me know that you're you're liking these videos and I can go on to make more. And also hit the subscribe button, which should be down here somewhere. If you want to be notified when more videos come along, then once you've subscribed, if you hit the little bell, uh, then the next time the video I post a video, you will be alerted to that. So again, please really appreciate it. Thumbs up, subscribe. Hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you found it informative and hopefully it's of some benefit to you. So hopefully I will see you in the next video. This has been All Painting My Way. My name's Rob. Enjoy the rest of your day.